Earning your degree online doesn't mean you have to go about it alone. At Capella University, we're here to support you when you're ready. From enrollment counselors who get to know you and your goals, to academic coaches who can help you form a plan to stay on track. We care about your success and are dedicated to helping you pursue your goals. Going back to school is a big step, but having support at every step of your academic journey can make a big difference. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu. Stop using five apps to manage your marketing. Meet Simplified One. It's an AI-powered all-in-one platform for creators and small businesses to design, make videos, and publish content to all social media platforms. Visit simplified.com and use Annika 30 to save 30% today. Welcome to Your Brand Amplified, the podcast where we interview marketers, publicists, and brands to learn their stories, what makes them tick, and tips and tricks that make a difference. Welcome back to Your Brand Amplified. I'm very excited to be here with Daniel Alfon. Today, we have, this has been a long time coming, I will say. Uh, we've been trying to coordinate because we are on other sides of the globe. Um, but that's one of the beauties of podcasting is you get to meet so many interesting people and hear their stories. So Daniel, thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you very much, Anika. I'm very uh, glad to be part of Your Brand Amplified. Yay. So we are going to talk today about LinkedIn profiles for business success, which I think is a very, it's a topic a lot of people haven't really realized how important this really is. When I look at all of the different social media platforms today, for me, LinkedIn is far more important than the other ones out there, whether it's that I'm working on a new business project or looking for a job or whatever the case may be. So I'd love for you, before we get into the topic, to let the audience know a little bit more about you and your background um, and why you, you know, transitioned to making this uh, really your area of excellence in business. With pleasure. It's a great question. Um, when I was, uh, I, I started with LinkedIn early in 2004. And I was looking for a playbook and I couldn't find anything really. And I needed to create my own. I made a ton of mistakes. And at one point, at one point um, I uh, carried quota in a sales position and LinkedIn helped me cut my sales cycle significantly. Hmm. And that's the moment I decided I needed to dive and see what what's under the hood. And I'm very happy. I specialized since you hit record, a hundred people have joined LinkedIn. Each second, two people sign up. Wow. It's growing. <laughs> Wonderful. So how did you take, so you were in sales before and you were seeing it as kind of a lead generation tool? Um, yeah, it, it, it has changed and it's, it's evolved. But let, let's start from the beginning. Our audience here, when they Google their own name or when our prospects Google our name, then our LinkedIn profiles will top the list for most people, most entrepreneurs and most uh, uh, SMBs. Even people who had, you know, TED Talks and published authors, LinkedIn will still top the list. Mm. So the first takeaway is that, that as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, you need to manage this. You can't just let it and you can't stick with the LinkedIn defaults. You have to be aware of the fact that anyone Googling you will land on that site and it's, mm. yours, to, it's yours to leverage. Yeah, so it's a very powerful marketing tool. We all have a free access to it and don't even realize what it can do for us or how it could hurt us. Absolutely. Uh, we need to be, uh, uh, we need to amplify, our LinkedIn presence needs to amplify our brand. Okay. And nice. it needs to be aligned. And I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is the best uh, policy, you know, if, <laughs> if, uh, if your uh, uh, brand is misaligned with what people see about you on your website or on LinkedIn, then we have a problem. Mm. And, and contrary to other people, to other um, issues like the website and, you know, SEO or search and optimization, LinkedIn is, is something you can fix and update now. And in five minutes time, the whole world will see what's uh, what decision you've made. So there is no excuse. It's yours to, uh, to own. Mm. What are some of the most common mistakes that you see with people's LinkedIn profiles? <laughs> that could be a whole series, but very quickly. <laughs> um, perhaps not realizing the way their own uh, profile looks from the outside. 
mm. for their for their prospects. So maybe I could suggest a simple three question framework, like who's who's our ideal prospect. So if we uh, run a, a business, our ideal prospect could be uh, San Diego or writers or Los Angeles uh, bloggers or anything that caters to to our brand. And the second question is. What action would you like those people to perform, Anika, when they visit your own profile? Mm -hmm. What would you like them to do? If, I, if I'm interested in a PR plus company and I bump into your profile and never heard your name before, what action would you like to, me to perform? Yeah, well, and that's a good question. So I think I know if I'm looking at my own LinkedIn and the inbound that I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of people who want to connect with me who want to sell me services because they see my title, VP of marketing, right? But I'm on there. I, I don't want to take 20 calls in one week with different lead generation companies, <laughs> to be quite blunt, or you know, 20 calls for a company that's going to show me how to use video the best for my clients, because we have a lot of those resources internally already. So how do I reach people who need the PR, marketing, SEO, website services? better excellent. with my profile excellent so let's say this imagine the funnel a usual a traditional funnel and you translate it into linkedin hmm. so the top of the funnel would be people finding you either through word of mouth or through search or from direct actions you performed on linkedin yeah. um marketers often disregard the LinkedIn SEO aspect. So because you know so much about your specialty, the terms you're likely to use are probably more niche terms and more professional terms than your clients. So what yeah. sort of, well, I would ask what sort of, um, if you could interview a prospect and ask them, if you had to Google this, what terms would you use? And then you need to make sure that the key terms you're, you're hearing from your prospects are represented somewhere on your profile. And I'm sure a lot of them are, but if you aim for say 50 keywords, then most marketers will find 10, 20, 30, but there, are, there, there is always room to improve this. And that will bring more people to the top of the funnel. And then when they visit your own profile, the visual element that they see is the banner. You mentioned the fact that it's a free uh, uh, resource for us to use. The banner you uploaded, you don't need to pay LinkedIn to do this. You just have to use your imagination and be creative about it. And you have a beautiful banner. It has the bastion. It has wide thinking, deep expertise. It's very colorful. And by uploading a banner, you encourage people to stay longer on your profile and try to dig deeper and understand what is it exactly that Anita Jackson does and what is, could that be relevant for me? Second stage would be to look at the headline. The headline is the most important uh, real estate we have on our profiles. And by default, it would be just our title and our current position. Mm. But you have turned your, yours around and you improved it. Instead of just saying VP of marketing, best in elevate, say strategic communication professional focused on helping brands and entrepreneurs empower, celebrate, and strategically amplify impact in the world. That's more customer focused than VP marketing XYZ. Mm -hmm. We are not important. <laughs> And our customers don't care about us. Right. <laughs> they only care about the ways we could improve their businesses or their lives. Mm, okay. So that's a lot to think about. And then even thinking if my headline is my goal and something that that's what I like to do, but does it speak enough to what my company does? Do, you know, again, going mm -hmm. back to what you said about using those keywords. And then when you're working with somebody is beyond going through their profile and helping them retool and recalibrate it, then do you also work with them on what kind of posts and content they should be creating, sharing, all of that? Absolutely. There, there is yeah. a, a four-tier uh, um, strategy starting from your presence, your, your profile optimization. And then your connection strategy, 
your content strategy and lastly the lead generation strategy mm -hmm. so that's that's generally the, the best order because anything any action you perform on linkedin will show people your profile so your, your profile had better be optimized before you accept connections or before you send invitations or before you share anything and um i'm blessed with helping people that i could like you said people who work in in all sorts of places that uh, virtually we could uh, connect and, and help them and, and see results yeah wonderful um so i think a few important key takeaways there are one use the real estate that linkedin gives you for free so use that banner um i think even uh the image that you have right your headshot because yes. i've i've seen people um i won't name any names but who have pictures that i'm like that is not linkedin appropriate maybe it's a picture of them on the beach you know in a swimsuit or something because they want to show the world that they're 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 not working looking for a corporate job um maybe they're doing some other business but if i were looking at their profile and knew okay but this person now is in doing real estate development as their second career after retirement is that the per do i want to work with that person who has that picture or do I, you know, so I think um, it's really important to think about how you're showing up. And this is something I know we caution um, younger generations when they are on any social media, how are you showing up on social media? LinkedIn is social media. So we need to remember that every facet of that is important. So the, the cover image, your photo, and then what you said about, don't just let LinkedIn automatically put your latest job title your school, whatever it is, as your headline, make sure that you're really tailoring it um, to the impact or what you can bring to the table for the brands that you're looking to work with. That's absolutely important. And, and LinkedIn is the probably the most traditional and business oriented platform there is. Mm -hmm. And um, if we if you need to think about ways to amplify your brands so let's ask three simple questions one are you happy with posting that or using that photo mm -hmm. and maybe the professional you looked at was really happy about that uh, uh swimsuit uh one but the second question should be okay is my network when they see this when they go and say what was he thinking or will they say yes that's that's the person i worked with or that's that's really their style and the third question is your ideal prospect when they see that how are they going to say hey this is not the kind of person i want to start exploring a business relationship with and if any of those question if your answer is no then you need to change and and be and be more conservative than what you do on, on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tailor. So tailor for different platforms. Same thing we right. say in uh, when if we're doing overall social media strategy for a client, like everything, every platform is slightly nuanced, slightly different part of your audience you're going to reach. Um, and journalists too. If somebody is looking, wants to get more exposure in the media, journalists are going to go to their LinkedIn, certainly. Yeah. You're right. Uh, uh, I, I was uh, listening to uh, an episode you, you uh, released with uh, Lisa Stevenson, mm -hmm. and and you mentioned uh, Harrow and and other uh, other tools that uh, um, junior PR people could uh, could uh, could use to uh, to gain more um, more business or or more leads. And I remember you you wanted when you were in high school you wanted to become a writer. Mm -hmm. So are you using the LinkedIn platform to write articles that mm. would be published on LinkedIn? Yeah, and I haven't been, and it's something that I've wanted to do, but it's all time, right? I think when you get to more <laughs> senior leadership, especially, you just don't have as much time um, if you're working in the business and on the business and this and this and this and wearing many hats. So, um, but I think that's important and talking about how do you rather than just posting on your own linkedin page mm -hmm. how do you elevate what you write to be something that linkedin is sharing that linked is officially published by linkedin and what is you know what's that difference okay so the first disti distinction Nick, i would make is between posts and what linkedin calls linkedin articles mm -hmm. 
LinkedIn articles are native if you'd like. So you can uh, publish, uh, uh, publish an article there. And I would uh, um, say that articles are best for evergreen educational content mm. that is on brand and that would serve you in 2025. Okay, so it's not urgent, it's important. You can take six months to, re to think about the ways you'd like to, uh, to have it and about the headline and the images and the, and the flow, whatever you'd like. And, and once you have it, another additional benefit of sharing an article versus a post that drives people to your website or to uh, some, some other external source is that LinkedIn doesn't want people to go away from the platform. So imagine you were you had two choices. One is to send them to anikapr.com and to an article there, and and the second would be to sh to send them to an article within the LinkedIn gated uh, platform. Mm -hmm. So the algorithm is going to prefer the second option because they know that when they show it to more people, those people are not going to leave LinkedIn. Ah. So even one article could be a nice addition to a strategy, and and you and you can use it to show and strengthen your thought leadership. Yeah. And thought leadership is very important these days. Um, it's one of the biggest strategies we, we use for public relations. It's, it's not, you know, it's funny because I think the world of PR and integrated marketing has shifted a lot. And so when people think traditional PR, they think, okay, you're going to try to get me interviews. Maybe I'll get a quote and an article. Maybe I'll be, the whole article will be about me, but Thought leadership, your point of view is um, published, you know, in somewhere else like a LinkedIn or an Inc or Forbes or wherever is so much um, more, adds so much more to credibility these days. And it is a big tactic that we use. So I love that you're giving this distinction between just making a post, doing an actual article on LinkedIn. And you also said, it's important, not urgent. And I think that's an important distinction as well. Um, when people are thinking about their overall content strategy, whether it's on LinkedIn or other, another platform, what is urgent versus important? What's the best use case? And thank you also for sharing about the algorithm because um, I know I see a lot of things from people that I don't know because somebody I know commented or because LinkedIn thinks it's a topic that will be important to me. And so in that case, right, it's the algorithm saying, oh, I think this you'll like this content, so let us share this with you. And so you can turn that around and think about what content you would want to share, publish on LinkedIn as native content, and then it pushes out to more people. Yes, yeah, you're absolutely brilliant. right. And educational content, if you, if you go back to your ideal prospect and you ask yourself, what questions are they struggling with mm. and what would make them tick? perhaps producing content around that topic that is not salesy mm -hmm. will make people discover your content and say they, they when they think about the way to grow their business, maybe uh, uh, the advanced PR strategies are, are not even in, their, in the awareness stage from their perspective. Maybe they think only about paid ads. So by showing them that there are pro and cons to paid ads, and there's also another option you can guide those who like that option to take one step with you from point A to point B. And at the very end, you say, there's also a point C I could teach mm. you, okay? I could guide you. And you, 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 you start by, you, you lead by value, you, you answer the questions, and those that continue are, could become long-term relationship of yours and long-term uh, clients of yours, of course. So, uh when you started making LinkedIn your job, for, for lack of a better <laughs> term, <laughs> right? Um, did, did you use all these strategies to find your clients via LinkedIn? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, even today, most of my inbound inquiries are referrals, probably 90%. Mm. And, and I found that referrals are the best uh, clients that I, that I have and, and growing my business is not for me, it's not necessarily earning more dollars. It's deciding who I'd like to work with. Nice. And, and I'm happy to work with people I enjoy working with. I enjoy having a conversation with and, and, and referrals, you know, they're, 
referrals tend to be less price sensitive. They come almost pre-sold because someone who has worked with you has told them and, and they appreciate that person's point of view and they tend to stay with you longer and, and eventually sending uh, new referrals your way. So referrals is uh, a big uh, marketing strategy uh, for me and LinkedIn is just the tool. As much as I love the platform, mm -hmm. referrals and relationships are more important than LinkedIn. Hmm. Yeah, I, I would agree with you there. I've had a lot of um, business through referrals, but then when I think, depending on what business you're in, then you get to a certain point and you go, okay, but how do I expand beyond? And that's where LinkedIn comes into play as, as an important strategy, as an important tool. So what is um, like a big, one of the biggest aha moments that you a client had working with you? Did um, th there were many, probably just a, uh... Uh, one of the best kept secret in towns is is the way that the advanced searches run on LinkedIn. Hmm. And in, in short, if you know who your ideal client is, and if they are on LinkedIn, that then within minutes you can find them. Wow. And then there's a whole new game of whether you um, leverage if you have if you connect with people you know well. That means that whenever you run a search and you 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 share a mutual connection with that potential prospect, then Anika, you can actually leave LinkedIn and, and converse with that person and ask them whether they feel comfortable enough making the introduction. And if they do, then you get your foot in the door thanks to their name. It's not our name. It's the person that makes the introduction. And when they make the introduction, we get at least the, the ability to, to pitch or to to have to serve other people thanks to that mutual connection. And you can also lead by content. If you, sh if you, if you produce, I don't think our audience here needs to produce content for LinkedIn, mm -hmm. but what we could do is analyze the sort of content we have, assess the content we have, and make sure that the best content, the best educational content is well shared across the LinkedIn platform. Mm. And that is that is much less time consuming than producing high quality content. But mm -hmm. they're on your website or on your social channels. You may have tons of pieces you can repurpose that are great, and maybe ten percent of them were shared at one at one point on LinkedIn. So take a look at the other ninety percent and decide that's also something you can delegate. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you you would do it for you would once you would teach someone and by the third time they would know exactly uh, what to do because the content has already been approved and it, it's it's a no brainer really. Yeah, interesting. I like that. Um, gosh, what was the next thing I was going to ask you? Well, what continues to inspire and motivate you about doing this work and helping people, you know, really live who they are? and show up as who they really are and who they want to be on LinkedIn? Well, um, I think that one of the moments I had was realizing that if you're an introvert, there's a way for you to be yourself on LinkedIn ah. and you can grow your business and you don't need to become someone else for the sake of the platform. And I'm, I'm using LinkedIn as an example, but it's the right for any, any platform. There's a way for you to be authentic and, and to gain business and to gain revenues and to gain new clients. And you don't have to become someone else. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of um, very talented people, very talented people need, think that they need to become someone else because what they see on LinkedIn is something else. And, and a simple question would, would be to do what's right and not what, what's popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good phrase. <laughs> so what, what do you see? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what do you see as um, what's next for LinkedIn and then for yourself as well? Well, for LinkedIn, um, whenever I run a workshop, um, I, I see that in, in just an hour before the workshop, I need to make sure that everything works. So LinkedIn has a, a nasty habit of discontinuing services just when uh, I have some some oh, no. or some <laughs> so I'm I, I can't uh, really say what LinkedIn will uh, will become um, and I think that looking ahead um, I'm very happy I fired for the lack of a better firm uh, term um, 
uh, clients where the fit was not uh, was less than than ideal, mm-hmm. and and that helped me. I probably left a lot of money on the table, but I slept better, and it was more than compensated by people I enjoyed working with, who either extended their relationship with with me or or sent other uh, referrals. So deciding who you'd like to become and who you'd like to work with is. Uh, is the way I'd like to uh, continue uh, looking ahead. Yeah, no, that's very important. I think that adds so much to the quality of our lives, right? Um, when you can do work that you really enjoy and that you know you can make a difference for somebody, but you also want to enjoy the person you're working with <laughs> and that relationship <laughs> um, and what they their success and seeing them happy and joyful because of the success that they're finding by working with you and how you've been able to help you know, change their strategy or change their, you know, it's, it's like cha- making these tweaks isn't changing their mindset, but it is, it ends up changing how they have their outlook. And that's it's very contagious. powerful. Yeah. yeah. So I know when we work with a client, if we're starting a social media strategy or a PR strategy, we often tell them in the first month, maybe even six weeks, we have to do a lot of onboarding. We're researching their competitors. We're seeing what materials do they have? Do we need any content created? You know, do we have to revise their bios, um, get new headshots, whatever it might be. And so while we, I think, you know, we all want to go, go, go. Well, especially here in the States, we want immediate results, right? Um, And people don't always realize that things take time. So when somebody starts working with you, is it kind of that same process of like, you have to really assess the landscape do a really in-depth analysis of what, who they're currently showing up with and if it matches what their goals are, like as you mentioned in the, the first four questions that you ask. Uh, truth to be told, it is challenging for not only the states and, and um, one way we could probably start working with those people is, is picking a, an easy win, something that they are obsessed about or that they really care about, but as soon as we deliver that small project, we make a pause and, and we show them that, that in order to move to the next stage, mm-hmm. there's something to be done. And, and they need to appreciate what you've done before that they're um, open to, to listen to, uh, to what, is, what, what, what you can show them. And, and then if, they're, if they are interested in, in, um, behave, in taking their business to the next level, they would you have a buy-in and, and they would commit the time. It, it's often, it's, it's a question of priorities. When that, mm-hmm. Once you show them the, uh, the advantage of, of what, what it is you suggested, they become a lot more willing to, uh, to listen to you and to, uh, to implement your suggestions. <laughs> nice. Well, what else would you like to share with our audience today about you, about the process? Um, I really enjoy working with different people and, and each entrepreneur in each uh, SMB uh, uh, is, is unique. And um, I'm, I'm open to, um, uh, to help or to guide, or there are all sorts of, of free materials on, on my website that are uh, uh, showing my perspectives on, on LinkedIn and marketing and, and networking. If I had a quick uh, topic we, we we mentioned but we haven't really uh, explored is is, is networking. Mm-hmm. And networking is is probably the single uh, most important uh, element that we need to um, become better at as professionals, whether we're a, a publicist or writers. Or, or professional athlete, it doesn't matter. It's what will help us pivot in 2027. And I have no idea what will, what LinkedIn will become in 2027. And maybe uh, we'll have a chat about some platform that that is being born <laughs> in, in the San Francisco Bay right now. I don't know. Yeah. But if we manage to keep in touch with people uh, we, uh, we met without asking for their help all the time, then we're able to reach out to them like an insurance policy, if you like. If you only remember people when you need them, then we have a problem. Ah, so nurturing the relationships that you build is important. 
Yes, it's yeah. a lot easier because just like acquiring a new client would take a lot more effort than uh, um, nurturing an existing client. Nurturing an existing relationship is a lot easier and a lot less time consuming mm -hmm. than, than, you know, uh, going cold on someone and persuading them that you're the solution for a problem they don't even understand they have. <laughs> this is very true. <laughs> the low hanging fruit. Right. Yeah, I love that. Um, do you have a favorite quote or some words that you live by? Uh, I quote one, uh, diplomacy is the art of letting someone else have it your way. Oh, I like that. Okay. Attributed to uh, Daniel <laughs> Vare, an Italian diplomat, and uh, it's, it, I found it on uh, Getting Past No by uh, William Uri. Oh, I love that. I love that. I'm going to have to um, remember that. It's another one. I'm, it's another keeper. I have a collection of ones that people have told me that I'm going to, I need to write them all down and just put them up on my wall, right? <laughs> what quote would, would you uh, like to share? What is the quote you live by or quote you, you like? Oh, um, be kind whenever possible. It is always possible. It's very powerful, both halves. <laughs> yeah, I think we have to treat ourselves with kindness and we have to treat others with kindness, right? And sometimes Absolutely. we don't want to do either, <laughs> but both are necessary and important. So, well, Daniel, I know it's um, late for you. It's, I'm still getting my day started, but I really appreciate <laughs> this time together. And I'm going to make sure people come to your website, danielalfon.com. Um, are there other social, are you the same on other social media platforms? Um, yes. So my, my website has links to, to the Amazon book and Twitter and, and but my website is probably the, uh, the place that is uh, most up to date probably. Okay. Well, and give a Thank quick you. little plug for your book. So the book, um, I, the truth is when I, I wanted to buy a book and, um, when I, um, bought the book i saw an ad saying are you an author click here hmm. and and then i said okay so if that's very that simple then if i put my mind to it in three weeks i can i can write a book wow. and lo and behold you know two years later i had a book <laughs> i was gonna say wow three weeks oh my gosh you really yeah <laughs> I was over uh, <laughs> overconfident. The, the draft was there in, in within three weeks, but the editing and, and everything else took a lot, a lot more time. And yeah. it was uh, an interesting experience from my perspective, trying to to have to write it in a way that would be easy to read and easy to uh, to implement. And obviously, things have have changed since uh, the book was published. But it was an experience uh, I really enjoyed. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I can't wait to check it out myself. And again, thank you so much for being with us. You definitely gave some great tips that people can implement right now. I will also encourage everyone listening to go to danielalfon.com. I will put that in the show notes so that you can get more tips and tricks for your LinkedIn strategy. And might I add, these are also good tips and tricks to think about for your other social media strategies as well. Um, but I think LinkedIn is a wonderful place to start, especially with today's job market and the confluence of so many different types of social media. I feel like LinkedIn still cuts through the clutter and gets us to the people we want to meet. So I was really excited to have this conversation and I will be back again next week with more tips and tricks on marketing, PR, and other things that entrepreneurs and small businesses need to know. Talk to you then. Want more? Check out AmplifyWithAnnika.com or follow me on socials at Amplify with Annika. Earning your degree online doesn't mean you have to go about it alone. At Capella University, we're here to support you when you're ready. From enrollment counselors who get to know you and your goals to academic coaches who can help you form a plan to stay on track. We care about your success and are dedicated to helping you pursue your goals. Going back to school is a big step, but having support at every step of your academic journey can make a big difference. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu. Editing long podcasts like this or webinars for social is time-consuming. 
Simplified AI Clips uses AI to turn your lengthy videos into short, viral clips. Create shareable content from your recordings in a few minutes. Built for small businesses and marketers looking to save time and boost engagement, visit Simplified.com and use Anika 30 to save 30% today. With U.S. Cellular Prepaid, you'll never be slowed down with our nationwide 5G coverage. We'll treat you like a priority, even during peak network usage. And now you can get a Moto G Play free when you add a line of service. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. See uscellular.com for details.